Hey, I'm Rob Smith with BlackFilm.com, and I'm here with Michael Thomas and Michael Franklin, who are both involved with That's Wild, a documentary currently running as an official selection during the American Black Film Festival. The award-winning documentary tells the heartfelt story of Clifford, age 16, and Nicholas and Amani, age 13, these three underserved teenagers from Atlanta attempting to climb four snow-capped peaks in the heart of the Colorado wilderness, all while overcoming their own personal mountains. Welcome, you guys. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Love that interview. I mean, that intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us. I mean, I just watched the documentary and I have to say I was blown away. I was on the verge of tears and then I was nice. proud and excited for these kids. It's just a wonderful job that you guys did on this documentary, I have to say. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So I just want to jump right in. So Michael Thomas, you directed yeah. this film. You filmed it, you produced it, and you co-edited the documentary. Yes. How did this project come about for you? And how was that experience both physically and emotionally because you were out there with these kids when they were gaining this you know, new world, new life perspective and, and digging into nature for the first time? Well, the, the idea actually we both came up with because I just uh, finished my first documentary mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, after one, the second one is just going to come like that. But uh, <laughs> it didn't happen like that. And we were bouncing off ideas and and Mike said, you know, like you love the outdoors. You love right. to tell stories from the inner city. So try to look at that direction. And I was looking up and I found great organizations uh, in different cities. Um, who do introduce inner city kids to the outdoors. And um, I visited several of them. I filmed with several several of them for a second. I thought, you know, maybe it could be good to follow different organizations. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, the organization Wilderness Works from Atlanta, uh, it was a great group of kids um, led by great people. Um, it was a great vibe. Uh, the fact that they were also going to go to Colorado was was perfect. So, you know, all those things were falling into place. And I thought, you know, that's that's the organization to focus on. And and that's the story to tell. And um, yeah, and being on the trail with these guys, it's, you know, I kind of took a leap of faith because it's not a documentary where, you know, you look back at something. Right. We had to experience it. And um, and, you know, throughout the trip, the, the kids started opening up. Things started to happen. So um, I'm happy that things actually happened <laughs> and that I had a movie to make. Um, and yeah, and afterwards, yeah, we, we bounced off ideas of each other. I showed him the footage and mm. um, and it worked out. Yeah. Well, I, I you can obviously tell that there was a lot of love and energy and research that went yeah. into it. And I, I'm glad you picked that organization as well because the connection with those kids and, and seeing the life experience they were going through was really powerful. So you, you picked the right organization and you did some, some good work there. Um, Michael Franklin, uh, yeah. you and I have been in acting classes together, so I know for you this is a bit of a change of direction for you right. being behind the camera. Can you share with us a little bit about how the producing side of things found its way to you and what that experience was like for you? Um, well, like one of the biggest things like for Michael, like you said, when he was coming off his last documentary, is that, you know, it was we were trying to find a good combination for the next documentary that would be inspirational, something that comes, you know, directly out of Michael, which is he has a huge love for the inner city youth and he loves nature like no other. So we was bouncing down, like he said, bouncing forth different ideas. And I was just inspired by his love. So it's like, you know, let's let's come together, you know, nature, um, inner city youth. Uh, for me, you know, usually with auditioning and acting and and you know being pinned and on hold and all that kind of things you know the producing side is you have a little more control over it and you 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 able to be more um i won't say more creative but creative in a different way so yeah it was it was um a very inspirational type it just moves me if that make anything you know what i mean and we're, we're, we're also a good team, you know, like I, yeah, definitely. Uh, um, I have ADD and um, <laughs> structure is not always my best side. And he's always very good to calm me down and to, you know, to 
get myself together. And uh, so he's like, he's been great to bounce off Thank ideas you. and, you know, <laughs> we work well together. Well, you know, there was, there was, it definitely came across. So hopefully there's more to come, but we'll get to that later. Hopefully there's more to come with you guys collaborating because this documentary was, again, it was extremely powerful. And I yeah. hope as many people as possible get to see this and support this movement and this, and this, this project that you put forth. Um, the documentary, speaking of, the documentary touches on uh, topics that I think are really, really relevant right now with everything that's going on in the world with, um, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement with all of the horrible things we see happening day to day that have become uh, sort of unfortunately like household images that we see. Um, and with so many of the systemic issues that minority communities have historically faced in America, finally having this bright light shine on them, we mm -hmm. see some of these kids dealing with them like living in substandard housing. Uh, unfortunately, a disproportionate number of them had fathers who were incarcerated or had experienced incarceration and how that impacted their life. Their mothers were working multiple jobs just to make sure that they had a roof over their head or food. Mm -hmm. um, how important was it for you to showcase the, the change that these young men went through after gaining access and a connection to nature and the world outside of the reality that, that they traditionally live in? Very important. And I think a lot of those issues that you just mentioned have been shown in documentaries on and on TV. So I didn't just want to repeat the issues, but, you know, show a type of solution that is, you know, that is not being associated to those type of issues. And um, and it's not like, you know, once you go into nature, all the problems are solved. <laughs> but it is, you know, it is it is it does boost the self-esteem of the kids. It, it does present opportunities, a new way of thinking, and it, it brings so much enrichments in, from so many ways mm -hmm. that, um, you know, I think it was very important to show that message, um, especially to that community and to everyone, because it's, I think it's something that uh, applies to everyone. It's just, you never see those two worlds come together. And Correct. that was very important to me. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you definitely saw the, the the pride in those kids as they experienced, you know, being able to be leaders to the younger kids following them, and um, an opportunity to kind of expand themselves into a world where they were kind of they were developing those life lessons and experiences that traditionally would have been passed down to them by a father had they, you know, had the opportunity to have them there. So it was really beautiful to watch them grow in that way with the other kids around them. So. It was really, really moving and impactful. There was a quote that one of the kids said. He said, there's a huge world out there and so oh. much to discover. It was really a beautiful, it was one of those moments where I almost teared up. Um, how important are organizations like Wilderness Works to the advancing, the advance, uh, advancing opportunities for these uh, youth in urban environments? And how can people who watch and experience this documentary support that movement and support this project? I would say what donate, yeah. Like, um, it's hugely important. If hugely is word, <laughs> but it's it's very important. Um, like, one of the biggest ways to help would probably be to find your local organization and donate, or even look up Wilderness Works and you know put your money where your mouth is, or you know just add a little uh, like for resources and or even volunteer and show up. You know, there's there's so many outlet outlets, but Michael, what do you think? Yeah, and like I said earlier, when I was doing research, um, I was pleasantly surprised that there actually were a lot of organizations yeah. like this out there. Um, of course, I mean, I picked Wilderness Works because they were amazing, mm -hmm. um, but I do think that it is very important that we we support those kinds of initiatives, and um, it all starts with opportunity. It's very important that we do give and stimulate opportunities, especially especially to underserved communities. Mm -hmm. So programs like that are extremely important. So um, in case of Wilderness Works, if you go to wildernessworks.org, you can find th uh, their website and, um, and ways to sponsor them. But like I said, there's a lot of great organizations out there and I think it's very important that we support those. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like I'm from Oakland, um, I'm from the inner city. And uh, like, I, I believe we had like boys 
boys club and different things like that, but we never experienced the wilderness. We didn't have like chances to go hiking or go to the mountains or, you know, like swimming, <laughs> you know, the majority of our time was, you know, in the workshop building blocks and stuff like that and trying to come together as a, as a, a community. But if I had those resources back then, I think that, you know, a lot of things that, you know, I still accomplished and still push forward, you know, would have came a lot easier because those kind of kids, you know, it's like, it's, it's just the inspiration in going to the outdoors, if that make any sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, now I, and now I force Mike to come with me on hikes. <laughs> no. Mike, how's that been? How's that been? <laughs> you know what? It's an experience. And I, like I said, I wish I had it at, you know, being in Oakland at 12 and 13, you yeah. know, but um, it's a big world out there and you, you really don't know it until you experience it. You hear about it, you see it on TV, but when you actually step out and experience it, it'll change you forever. Absolutely. You know, and traveling is a big thing for me. It's one thing that I absolutely mm -hmm. love to do. And I know that majority of the people aren't afforded the opportunity to just leave the, the world in the neighborhood that they're in on a daily basis and kind of right. escape that world and, and see that there's something bigger outside of the four walls. I think one of the kids' moms said that to see something that's bigger than the four walls that they're confined to and organizations like this that are giving these families and these kids an opportunity to expand beyond where they are and see the world in a, in, through a different lens is so powerful and so, and so impactful. Right. I just want to thank you guys again for sharing that um, with with all of us. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, Rob. thank you. So what, what, what's next for you guys? Um, well, for me, uh, well, we have a new documentary that's coming. Can't really talk too much about it yet. A little top okay. secret. All right. <laughs> It'll be completely different, but also inspirational. Um, season two of Truth Be Told is coming out, so hopefully, good things are coming in that way. All right. Michael? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, besides the project that he just mentioned. Uh, <laughs> it's also, like I said, I, I was filming with other organizations and I did assemble great footage from that and I'm happy that I was able to edit another short documentary about that. Um, and that's going to be on PBS, mm. uh, but the air date is not uh, clear yet. So, but that's, that's in the pipeline. Perfect. Perfect. So we'll yeah. look out for those for sure. And what what are your social media handles so people can follow you and continue to support you and support projects like this that are coming out in the future from you guys? For um, the documentary, it's at That's Wild Doc. Mm -hmm. um, and personally, it's Michael Thomas 6, but Michael is spelled M-I-C-H-I-E-L. It's the Belgian connection. <laughs> <laughs> and Thomas is just regular T-H-O-M-A-S and then number six. And my social media, Instagram is at Mr. Franklin 101. And it's the traditional African American of Philly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, perfect. So, again, I just want to thank you guys so much for sharing with us. And thank you for creating this beautiful work of art and really shining a light on the opportunity to, to, to give in a way that some of us may not have, to, to have thought we could possibly give and how to be so impactful to these kids in these urban communities. So thank you again so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely.